Well folks, a very good morning to you. Cotty Kaika here. Good to have your company as always. Today you join me on the banks of the Fosdyke navigation here in Saxelby, Lincolnshire. I've just arrived, it's around six o'clock in the morning, so a nice early start for me just again. I'm into these woods to take a bit of shade from the sun, just for the benefit of recording. Um, but let's have a walk up and have a look at this uh, stretch of water. The mist is on, the mist is on the water at the moment. It looks very, very inviting. Some lovely boats here. I've been trying to work out what this one is. It looks like a sort of hybrid submarine type thing. Never seen anything like it. There's a few fishermen knocking around. But don't that look nice? You can see just how strong this sun is. But what I was interested, for those who know me, they know that I love my wildlife and nature. Look at all these, uh, the Saturday Art Club. So they are the sort of some of the birds that I'm going to be looking out for during my paddle. The great spotted woodpecker. Hopefully you have one of those that comes into the back of where I live. I haven't seen him for a while. So anyway, this is where I am. Um, I think I'm going to get my um, my kayak inflated, get my uh, kit together, get organised, and have a paddle in that direction. And uh, I can't blow me weight, so I'll catch up with you very, very shortly. Well, once again, a very, very good morning to you. Um, as I said, I'm on the uh, stretch of water called the Fosdyke Navigation. I'm paddling um, westbound. Um, now, the Fosdyke Navigation, I've, I've never been on this stretch of water before. Um, and my first impression is, wow, what a cracking place to be. I've parked up at a, a, a little village called Saxelby. It's known as the, the Saxelby Village Moorings. And as you can see from the previous footage, there's some cracking river cruisers and some narrow boats here. I mean, proper nice things. Um, quite easy to, um, you know, get your boat in and out here. No problem at all. Um, the only thing that I would say, which is a bit of a downer, and I think I was just very, very lucky, that parking is not great. So what you do, there's a, there's a road that goes through the village um, and you can park on that road. But I got here very, very early this morning. I mean, sort of just after six o'clock. And, um, you know, I've got a big van granted, but I struggled to park. I, I managed to find somewhere and it meant a little walk. Once you park up, you then have to cross a footbridge and then you can set up sort of on side of the, uh, the, the the river. But 
a bit of a boy, if I'm honest. Um, but if you can, if you can um, cope with that, you will be treated to an unbelievable uh, sort of area. Sex will be um, really, really nice. Picnic tables, uh, woodland, um, spotlessly clean. Um, Apparently, according to some charts, I've just been reading tons and tons of wildlife to look out for. And the water is really got a bit of weed on it at the moment. And we've had some, well, we had a lot of rain overnight, to be fair. It really did hammer down overnight. But um, having said that, it's, it, the water is lovely and um, clear. And what I mean by that is there's no sort of weeds anywhere, which is lovely. There's a cool breeze into my face, and it's just beautiful paddling. So uh, yeah, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this uh, enjoy this paddle for a little bit. I'll catch up with you shortly. So the Fosdyke navigation, what can I tell you uh, about this stretch of water? <clears throat> well I'm paddling westbound and the plan is for me today is to get up to a place known as Tuxi Lock. Now I think it's about four or five mile from Saxelby village. Now whether I'm going to be able to have the energy to do that because the sun is coming out and it's quite going to get quite hot I think. I don't know but that's the plan. Have a little bit of breakfast there, chill out, and then have a pedal back. Once you get to Tuxi Lock, once through the lock, then you're into the tidal trent. If I was to pedal eastbound, um, I'd go past um, a place known as Burton Waters, sort of fancy place, I think it is, with a lot of um, big, powerful river cruisers. Um, private moorings, all that shebang. But if I keep going, um, it will eventually take me into the Brayford in Lincoln. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll then go through the Brayford and then it becomes the river. Now, I have a friend who paddles um, this stretch of water uh, quite regularly, and he has given me some uh, words of warning that these big fancy cruisers they sort of dart up and down this river at a right rate of knots uh, causing a lot of uh, turbulence in the water so he said be aware of that um, so I am hoping that all those lads are still in bed at the moment and that um, I'm gonna miss it but I do expect to, on my journey to see and I hope I do see some cruisers and some some narrow boats and some other boaters. Um, sort of stretches the water that I generally paddle on. I, you know, I, I kind of have the water to myself. I never really see anybody, so um, it's a bit antisocial, really. So it's always nice to see people that have the similar kind of interest as myself. So, yeah, fingers crossed, I will bump into one or two. There's a lovely breeze in my face at the minute. It's absolutely welcoming um, because I can feel that, that sun on my neck already. I've put some sun cream on. Um, but it's really, really powerful. I've had a crap week. Um, I've done a couple of evening paddles during the week just on my local river, but water uh, quality on there was so poor it really was kicking up some kind of smell it was disgusting um, lots of uh, flying insects shall we say uh, done my head in so it's just nice after a you know a crap week to get out on the river and get 
peace and quiet and chill out a little bit so I'm gonna make a make the most of that just seen a one jack deer I wouldn't say no to that as a little weekend retreat bit miserable that lad in there he'd uh, I sort of acknowledged him and uh, he looked at me as though I was a blooming ghost it's all kinds isn't there I suppose miserable bugger <laughs> can definitely see um, the appeal of living on a narrow boat. Um, the programs that I've watched on TV and YouTube, I mean it, it does seem to be a great way of life and I think my wife would jump at the opportunity of actually turning that into a reality. However, <clears throat> I don't know whether I could actually cope with all the blooming locks. Um, I think it would probably drive me mad, if I'm honest. Yeah, see, that's a nice little cruiser. Something like that, I think, I've always is appealed to me. Not too big. Yeah, just, just nice, that, as a weekender. This one here looks like, I don't know what that is, it looks like it's got a shed on it. Double glaze, is that double glaze or single glaze shed? <laughs> yeah. Now, as I've been paddling, I've had several boats that have overtaken me, not particularly fast, but um, you know, there's a few, and that they're reasonably quiet. I'm a bit deaf. What? Yeah, I'm a bit deaf. And I don't have the greatest of hearing. What? I said I don't have the greatest of hearing. And, uh, you know, I can't really sort of hear them until they're really close to me. Now, being an old fart, I struggle to sort of spin around to see what's going on behind me, so I have to rely on my hearing as best I can. Which I've established ain't that great. So I was just sitting here thinking, what I could do with is a mirror. So I can get a mirror out and just every now and again have a look and see what's behind me. And then I thought, even better than that, what I could do is get some uh, wing mirrors and stick them on my kayak. And I could just sit here and see exactly what's going on that way and that way behind me. Oh, it was a brilliant idea. So, uh, I'm going to get some big Vivaro wing mirrors and stick them on my boat. No, but seriously, you know, these, these sort of, you know, when you're paddling on rivers where there is traffic coming up behind you, and there's going to be quite a bit of traffic, I would have thought, because they're all going up to Toxie Lock. You know, I definitely think it was, uh, for me, it's a good idea, um, you know, just to get a mirror out and see what's going off behind me, because I can't really, like I say, I can't find it very difficult to sort of pivot around. So, uh, yep, that's next on the shopping list. Or, I should raid... Lorraine's vanity case. Nick one. A dead swan. Looks like it's been there a little while. On that bramble bush. Don't want to be uh, drifting into that, do I? Do you know, I have to say that of all the rivers and canals that I've paddled on, I've seen more dead world life today, I think, than I have, you know, live. That's dead swan. I've seen three 
dead carp, and I mean big carp, you know, fair sized carp, dead um, muntjac deer there, and um, I've seen a dead pigeon. So, uh, God, I hope that ain't an omen. It's a wonder, don't it? chop on the uh, on the water that every now and again becomes quite severe and on this go plus uh, kayak you kind of get that bump, 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 front which is blooming annoying I have to say I think that's probably my only criticism other than the fact that there's no carry handles sort of left and right but I'm going to rectify that because I've got a couple of handles on order I'm going to glue on um, but that I'll tell you not having those handles is ridiculous you've got handle front and back you know so you know two people can carry it unless you've got arms like King Kong yet this is a one person kayak so it make any sense to me that so I'm going to rectify that for sure but honestly it's really I'm full on into it and it's really blowing a hoolie Good old upper body workout. <laughs> well at last a welcome sight. Let me just spin this camera around. Because in the distance there is Toxie Lock. And about a mile of this paddle has been full on into the wind, so that is a really welcome sight to get out and stretch the legs there. Right, let's go and check it out. that one there has attacked me proper aggressive that one I've tried to keep out their way but they've just followed me they've kind of followed me from where these boats are just here these first few boats look that's dead right aggressive bugger he is mum's had bums had a hiss at me Oh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven signets there. They're quite friendly. If he wants to start, he's going to get me paddle on his ooter. So you don't want to start those fun and games. Bless him. Well, folks, so here I am at Toxie Lock. Let's just have a look, see how long it's taken me from Saxelby. Get up Strava. Right. So it's taken me two hours and 26 minutes. Uh, bear in mind, I have stopped quite a few times actually to have a drink and um, chill out a little bit. I haven't actually got out of the kayak throughout the journey, uh, but I have stopped to have a drink and stuff like that. Uh, uh, average of 2.17 miles per hour, and it's exactly five just under five and a half miles and i have to say what a what a lovely paddle um what a lovely paddle it is really i've really enjoyed it the last sort of mile seemed to be full on into the wind it's quite hard going to be fair but now i'm here it's a really nice place let me just swing the camera so i've come from up this way um Paddled sort of westbound. Oh, those are really nice boats, more dear. It's a 
dreaded bloody swans. The problem is the babies are inquisitive and they want to come up to you. That's the problem. And then because mum and dad follow and they get quite aggressive. And there we are, lock keeper. Lads off duty today. It's a mess up in them gutters there. Give them a price to clear them and there's the lock. There we go. There we go. Swans, a paddler's worst friend. <laughs> well folks, a very, very simple breakfast for me this morning. Had a big fry up uh, yesterday, so I was gonna do the famous Cockney big omelette, but I've decided against it. And we're just going for something healthy. Boring but healthy. So let's get cracked on and uh, chill out for a bit and then pedal back. That's the plan anyway. Right, breakfast time. Yeah, so there we have it. A cup of coffee and some porridge with some biscuit stuff. So, uh, yeah, not the most uh, interesting of breakfast, but nevertheless filling and uh, most welcome. So let's get stuck in. So I know that when I get back into my my kayak and set off, I know that that swan's going to have a have a go at me. It's proper aggressive. So what I'm going to do is I've got some biscuits. So if he gets, in theory, food is probably the most important thing to him. He's probably more interested. I've just thrown him a biscuit and he was straight on it. So I'm thinking if I can throw him some a few biscuits out on the working on the theory that you know these any animal is more interested in food than anything else. It might just leave me alone long enough to uh, get my distance from him. Because I know he's gonna have a go at me. And he's a big old bugger as well. But uh, yeah, fun and games. Yeah, it's still very quiet here. Nothing coming in and out of the lock so far. Um, the rover's turned a bit cold, I just put me another jumper on. Paddling back, I'm going to have the wind behind me. I'm going to go with the uh, toe as well, so it's going to be a nice easy ped pedal back. So, I mean, no rush, I'm just going to eat this, chill out for a bit. Problem is, these, these swans have nowhere to go because there's a lock. So, I'm going to, it's going to be confrontational um, at some point, I'm sure. So if I can set my camera up, just so I'm a bit conscious that if he does go for it, I don't want any of me recording gear to go in the water. But hopefully I'll give him a bit of food. We might have made friends a little bit. Some of the signets now are falling asleep. If they go over on that far bank, hopefully, it should give me enough time to escape them. It's never quite that simple, is it? <laughs> well, talk about a stroke of luck. Well, I've just had one because just got all my stuff together ready to start paddling back <clears throat> and then swans well dad was an aggressive bugger and started to get into my kayak and he started hissing and as luck would have it the lock keeper appeared with some swan food 
threw a load of food into the water. And they're interested in me, disappeared straight away, and they're interested in that food. It was too great to attack me. So um, I made a quick escape. Oh no! So you get a big sort of cruiser like that and goes past you. Um, you know, kicks up a lot of a uh, lot of wake. A bit like being on the sea, sort of rocks you around a little bit. See uh, that guy there in that massive boat, he kind of slowed down. He see me come in and, and, and he'd done the right thing and slowed down. And when I passed him, there was still a massive amount of turbulence on the water. So I don't know whether the camera picked up, but boat up, down, up, down. So you imagine some of these um, river cruisers that don't slow down. Um, you know, they go flying up here and a little kayak like this is like being on the on the sea. It can really sort of throw you about. There's an example of two boaters that didn't slow down um, for whatever reason. So, you know, it jolts you around a little bit. Hey oh. So this looks like the first narrow boat that's actually been on the water or past me today. Hopefully there won't be so much uh, wake from this one problem is when these big big old boats come flying past you and that they kick up the water and it don't just flatten out quickly it takes ages for the water to kind of flatten out so you're being buffeted for you know five ten minutes here we got augustus hey mate you're all right Quite a busy, quite a busy waterway. This uh, it seemed to, I don't know, about half past ten, just sort of spring into life with with boaters appearing everywhere. And as I say, you know, some of these are big old boats, and you know they come flying past. They have no, don't seem to, like most of them don't have any regard for you know little kayaks like like this, and they come steaming past and just sort of obliterate the water and no consideration so you know and then it, it sort of the water's really really choppy sort of ruins that kind of relaxing sort of paddle <laughs> that often I'm looking for but there you go um, I've still got about a mile to go so I'm still gonna go past the odd one or two I mean, it ain't, a, it ain't horrendous, but as a 
you know for someone like myself that's quite new to it it's a, it's a different experience for me um, because some of it is um, some of these uh, these boats are you know, got some massive engines on them so you can imagine the sort of wake that they are churning up in the water um, and then what it does I mean I, I try to keep to the right and as it's churning up the water it just sort of throws me to the right and I have to be careful but um, yeah, it's not such a relaxing paddle. Um, coming, coming back actually. Certainly not like it was on the way to Talksy Lock. One good thing is once the water does eventually um, die down, you can just sort of sit back and the wind's behind you and sort of just drift along, you know, and never have a drink. Cheers. Every now and again, in the middle of nowhere, there's like these houses right on the uh, right on the river. How nice would that be to live there? Well, folks, I'm almost uh, back to Saxelby. Um, hope you've enjoyed just paddle with me on the Fosdyke navigation I've really really enjoyed it actually um, apart from coming back those uh, big river cruisers um, I've really had a good time and um, I'm certainly going to come back the next time that um, I visit I think what I'm going to do is go from a place called I think it's called Pie White it's a restaurant kind of pub which is a little bit nearer to Lincoln not by a lot probably by about three miles something like that and I'm gonna have a paddle through the town of uh, Lincoln but he's local to um, to Lincolnshire or in Lincolnshire that would like to join me for a paddle um, you're more than welcome if you'd like to join me perhaps on the paddle into Lincoln one Sunday morning please feel free to uh, message me and um, we'll have a bit of fun the only thing I would say is that I'm an early riser and I like to be on the, on the water nice and early especially on this Fosdyke navigation because as I say from about 10.30 the, the, the river just kind of woke up and there was a lot of uh, river cruisers um, probably coming from Burton Waters so I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please give it a thumbs up Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, it does give me the enthusiasm to come out and make these little videos for you. And um, until the next time, happy kayaking.